Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by... We fight the battles no one hears about. We drop into the middle of firefights to rescue others. And act as one-man air traffic control towers. We're the ones who go before all others. Join the fight. By Tri-County Logging, experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, TriCountyLogging.com. Hey everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. Thank you so much for joining us this week as we transition out of October into November. It is one of the more magical times to be a sportsman here in our great state. And for many of you watching out there, this time of year means deer hunting, and we're gonna have plenty of it on this week's show. Jordan Brown is gonna take us out into the tree stand and show us really what he's been seeing over the last few weeks. You're gonna probably, if you're like me, can't believe some of the deer he passes up. Then after that, we're gonna sit down with Gabe Van Warmer in his tree stand, and he's gonna show us again what the last several weeks have looked like for him. He's also gonna show us a little bit more about the tree sling that he wears. We showed that a week or so back on the show. Had a fair amount of people that wanted to know more about that and how that thing works, so we'll have that. But this time of year is not just about deer hunting. There is some really good fall fishing to be had as well. I was recently out on both Mullet Lake and Hardy Pond with some of the same guys to chase walleye here in the fall. Really cool story. You're not going to want to miss that. So lots of good stories on this week's show. Make sure you stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors What a beautiful day in the woods Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy The wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees the sweet smell of nature's in the air From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream Shining like a sportsman's dream It's a love of Michigan we all share Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988 Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online the Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at CountrySmokehouse.com. The Michigan Wildlife Council is dedicated to educating the public about the important role hunters and anglers play in supporting wildlife conservation for future generations. Learn more at hereforMIOutdoors.org. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at greenmarkequipment.com. By Showspan, producing consumer shows including the Ultimate Fishing Show, Detroit, January 7th to 10th at Novi Suburban Collection Showplace. The show features fishing tackle, trips, boats, and seminars from top pros. The Ultimate Fishing Show, Novi, January 7th to 10th. Well, it's the first week in November here in Michigan, and if you are a bow hunter, there is no better time. It's cold this morning. I got the sun coming out behind me. It's absolutely perfect out. Now, for our next segment on this week's show, what we're going to do is kind of give you an update on how Gabe and I have been doing in the bow stand over the last couple of weeks. Well, it's October 21st. Uh, back in the stand tonight, actually sitting in the same tree stand that uh, last week I had an encounter with a nice buck that was within bow range, but... Um, Unfortunately, I, I thought he was going to come closer, so I let him keep walking, and he smelled me, um, or saw me, I'm not sure, but um, so I'm back in that same spot tonight. It's about 150 yards outside of a well-used bedding area. There's a couple of big scrapes in here, uh, one of which I have a trail camera on, and I've gotten some incredible video of a couple different shooter bucks, so um, just trying to get the, the weather and the time right to get in here and, and hunt in the evening, so... Tonight we got a good wind and high pressure system coming in. It's a gorgeous October night. And even if the deer hunt's a little slow, it's a good night to be in the woods. So hopefully we get lucky and one of the bucks that we've got some pictures of will show up and 
we'll be able to seal the deal. While I was getting some footage of the buck from the trail camera photo, I heard something approaching from the other side of the tree. I turned around to see another nice buck working his way in. Absolutely incredible night in the tree. Just passed up another great buck. One that I have a couple pictures of, but not many. A uh, huge brow dines, really cool looking deer. Again, just not quite what I'm looking for, but man, I had my heart thumping, that was a nice buck. Came in here to about 10 yards. Two nice bucks, both within 15 yards tonight. The only thing I could ask for is one of the big ones to show up, but if they don't, I'm not worried about it at all. It's been a great night in the tree. It's only, you know, October 26th. We've got some really good days ahead of us, so keep on this area and see if maybe we can catch up with one of the nicer bucks but man really really fun set. The night ended with a pretty unique experience where I was able to capture a fox, deer, and turkey in the frame all at the same time. It was an incredible night in the woods to say the least. The next afternoon however my luck ran out as I stumbled on something that no bow hunter wants to find. Not exactly what you want to find on your way out of a tree stand. Someone had wounded a beautiful buck and uh, must not have been able to find it. You could see right where it was hit, kind of low and back, but uh, looked like 12 squirrel points. A deer I didn't have any pictures of or any history with, but beautiful buck. It's just not the way you want him to, to go down, unfortunately. So have to get a hold of a few of the neighbors and see if anybody's lost one that they couldn't recover. So. Bummer. Despite a bad end, the month of October treated me well, with lots of good encounters and a few close calls. Hopefully the good hunting continues well into November. not a whole lot of big bucks yet so hopefully today's the day that'll change that but I will 
tell you, I, I'm very blessed to be able to see a lot of sunrises during the fall. I mean, there's nothing like watching these colors change and seeing the woods change. There's nothing like it. Listen to wood ducks call in the morning. I've got some turkeys back behind me. There's a screech owl I could hear over that way. Just so cool to be out in uh, God's creation like this. One of the ways I believe hunters can be more effective on both public and private land is to always have an option to be mobile. Recently, there's been a trend to hunt out of tree saddles or tree slings. I've been using one for about 20 years now, and the new technology being used today is simply incredible. Well, tonight I'm hanging in a new tree saddle for me. This is a Latitude Outdoors Method tree saddle, and uh, I used a different one earlier this year out of this same tree and shot a nice doe right behind here. So I thought I'd come back to the same tree using a different saddle and see how I liked it. Um, this is a little different saddle. It's a two panel saddle. It separates, so one goes underneath your butt, one goes around your back, your lower back, and it cradles you a little bit different than a one panel uh, saddle does. And kind of neat to see all the technology that's come along in the last few years, but all these small ropes and everything add to the um, weight savings that you have in a saddle like this. So. This is the Method by Latitude Outdoors and uh, made right here in Michigan, which is pretty cool. After I saw this new tree saddle at Jay's and Claire, I wanted to learn more about this Michigan-made product. So what really sets our, our Method saddle apart from other options on the market is that it allows you to be super compact to a point where it's almost unnoticeable when you're walking into the woods, but you don't lose comfort once you get into the tree. One of the main problems we ran into when we were testing saddles for our own personal use is that we found ourselves having to choose between compact and comfort with the single panel saddles that are out on the market. The double panel saddle allows you to ride it up as you're walking in the woods so you don't even notice it and then when you get in the tree you can deploy that bottom piece which allows you to get that comfort and support where you need it. So this is our method saddle. You can see this one's been in the woods a little bit. Um, but it's a two-panel design. Uh, we call it a modern two-panel design because it was originally based off of the Anderson sling. Um, but we've done quite a few different things to make this extremely user-friendly and improve on some of the comfort aspects. Um, the number one thing uh, that I want to show with this particular version of it, because we do have two versions of the Method saddle, and this is extremely unique to us, is this rope belt um, for your waist belt. Most waist belts are made of webbing and they include a heavy metal buckle. Um, we actually eliminated some weight, potential noise, uh, by totally removing that buckle and switching to a climbing rated rope using a climbing rated slider knot. But this waist belt holds and carries weight with your saddle when you're hiking in the woods way better than any buckle based waist belt system. It's obvious these guys are passionate about hunting. The innovations they've come up with have really been a hit with the public land hunting community especially. The company just started selling products in July and are already doing well. Kevin even found some time to get out onto public land here in Michigan to take a very nice buck using their saddle. So no matter what method you use to get outdoors, good luck the rest of the season and be safe in the woods. Well, special thanks to Gabe and Jordan for sharing their hunts with us and if you're anything like me, it's kind of hard to watch them pass up some of those really nice bucks, but they both get big deer every year and they always put some nice stuff on the ground. So I guess we have to trust them, but I tell you what, man, those look like some nice bucks. We're gonna transition now over to fall fishing. There is so much good fishing happening around the state of Michigan. I was recently out targeting walleye with a guy both on Mullet Lake and then down on Hardy Pond as well. And so this time of year, you can find some really nice walleye fishing if you know where to look.
A few weeks ago, I was up north getting ready to hit Mullet Lake in hopes of finding some fall walleye. Brian Bice had invited me up here, and I usually don't need much prodding to head to this part of the state. We had three generations on board today. Brian had his father-in-law and his son Blake along for what we hoped would be a day full of walleye. So we're going to be using glide baits. We got a combination of Johnny Darters and Jig and Rapalas, and we're hitting uh, deep water next to shallow water. Right now we're sitting in a hole out in the middle of Mullet Lake. Um, so we're going to be fishing this deep water, pitching our jigs out just a, a little ways away from the boat, and we work them back. Typically the fish will hit it three quarters of the way back to the boat. That one's a little short, but it's good. We've getting a lot of different year classes out here this year, but okay, yeah, most of our fish have been about 18 to 20 inches. Our keepers, okay, so good nice. variety of fish out here. Some nice perch, and then do you troll for them too out here. Yes, we do. Um, we're right on transition today. This afternoon, we'll probably do a little bit of trolling um, with crawlers yet. I'm not a big crank guy, I'm a, I like my crawlers, so hopefully we can get them on some crawlers this afternoon or later on this morning. So That's a nice perch. Yeah. Oh, jeez, it is. Yumbo. Yeah. That's a good perch right there. Yeah, it is. Can't resist the glow. Look at how yellow that is. Mm -hmm. Pinned it right to the bottom. Somebody's line in there too. Yeah, my line got it. He was, was going to bite mine. And then... <laughs> There's a good fish. So I was jigging it and I felt it hit the bottom and I went to make my next jig and there he was. He just had it pinned right to the bottom. Huh. That's typically what they do when you're uh, fishing with these. They usually hit it on the fall, like I said before, or they just pin it right to the bottom. Hmm. And it surprises you every time. <laughs> Well, we had a handful of walleye, but not very many keepers, so we picked up and ran towards some of the areas that Brian likes to troll. The bottom bouncers were out and ready. So I started on mullet about the 1st of August, and it was a, strictly a troll bite with crawlers. Um, and we were trolling the north end of the lake in about 20 foot of water, and as the water temperatures start to drop, those fish start to push deeper. So when we were up on mullet in that particular show, um, the day we were out there, it was pretty windy. It was a really tough fish. We actually took a couple of waves over the front of the boat, which made it difficult for boat control. But when those fish start to pot up like that, it can be really fun. And that jig bite, you know, you could have 20, 30 fish days up there pretty easy. Well, we hooked up again just last week to try our luck at Hardy Pond. This is another giant piece of water that does hold some very nice fish. Well, today we're up on Hardy Dam and in the fall, these fish really hang on these really sharp breaks. So we're gonna hit a number of different spots today, focusing on like steep, steep breaks next to shallow water, adjacent to deep water. Uh, these fall fish are putting a feed bag on for the winter. We got uh, a couple of different techniques. We're using uh, Johnny darters, which are a glide bait. We're gonna be casting those off the front of the boat. And then we're Lindy rigging uh, live creek chubs and uh, sucker minnows off the back. So what you have here is a super simple rig. You have just basically a one-aught, um, this is a uh, Berkeley Fusion one-aught hook, and then a live creek chub. I like them about, this is about a perfect size creek chub. It's probably, I don't know, four and a half, five inches long. And then you have an 18 inch leader. You do not want a long leader, um, up to a, just a walking sinker, a one ounce walking sinker. Okay. And then that bead's just protecting your uh, knot there from your swivel so super simple rig and then you drop it down to the bottom and then you just pull it up off bottom and drop it back but the ticket to this rig is to not set the hook you want to when you feel a bite instantly let the line go and you feed that fish and it's a guessing game but I usually feed it about 10 to 15 seconds wait till I feel that fish and I just start reeling I don't even set the hook on the fish so it's kind of a technique to, to hooking them actually on both of these trips, Brian's son, Blake, who is seven, mind you, just about outfished everyone on the boat. This kid could catch fish out of a puddle. We had steady action most of the morning. So how are you working that, that jig there? Oh, you just cast it out there up over top of the break and then just kind of jig it back to you and um, let it hit bottom and then rip it up good and okay. just let it keep hitting bottom and work it right on back to you. Perfect. So. 
There he is. Nice. See, I didn't even really set the hook. I just swept it forward. And it is not a good feeling when they start head pounding with this rig because usually you don't hook them very good. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a nice keeper. Hey. hey. That'll work. Now you wonder where he's hooked or if he even was. <laughs> he's already off. It is. As we move from spot to spot, I asked Brian how he ever got the fishing bug and what that has turned into the last several years. I really caught the bug. My grandpa would always take me since I was about four years old, so a little younger than Blake. And uh, he really got me hooked on it. And we'd go up to the UP to Lake Independence, and it was always walleyes. And the challenge of the walleyes really kept me hooked. Well, then I started uh, fishing on my own, and I got into the West Michigan Walleye Club, which I'm actually president of the West Michigan Walleye Club now. And I started tournament fishing and just learning a ton. And every tournament you would learn so much and it was just kind of an addiction. And uh, then I became a charter captain because I had all the stuff from uh, tournament fishing. And I just really enjoy sharing all the secrets with, with my clients and getting out there and getting people on the water to experience it. It's a lot of fun. We had a nice mixed bag going today with some very nice eater-sized fish, but we also had one of the more <laughs> memorable netting jobs I can seem to remember. Oh, oh, oh. Whoa! That's, <laughs> That's a musky. That's a musky. <laughs> Holy cow! What? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> well That's then. a fiasco up here. Well then. Broken net, got a musky. Do you guys normally catch muskies in here? Very rare. All right, nice Probably job, boys. One other one out of here before, and it was about that same size. That was a record-setting net job there, too. <laughs> <laughs> it was really interesting to me that Brian guides on several different bodies of water all across the state of Michigan. So I had him talk a little bit about where he is typically in a normal year of fishing. So I always start my season uh, the month of April on Detroit River uh, because most everything else is closed. So I start on Detroit River, the month of April. The month of May, I move up to uh, St. Clair River. And then into June, I'm on Lake Erie, usually out of uh, Sterling State Park. And then July and August, I'm spending a lot of time in Northern Michigan, like Lake Leelanau, Mullet Lake, Burt Lake. Those, those lakes up there are just perfect that time of year. And I do fish Muskegon Lake the month of July quite often as well. That's my home, home lake, I, I love to, fish that lake. And then September, October, November, I'm on Hardy Dam, Muskegon Lake, Mullet Lake, Burt Lake. Um, and it's pretty much all jigging from, uh, you know, October, November on. And then you get into late November, into December, I'm really after the deep water walleyes on Muskegon Lake, doing a lot of trolling. It's close to home. And uh, you can really get out there and get after some uh, nice walleyes. We caught a couple of walleyes last year that were about 13 pounds off from the Stegan Lake. So, What a fun group of guys. And this time of year, well, it just goes too fast. Whether you're climbing into a bow stand or a duck blind or trying to find some walleye, good luck. And what a grand old state we have. Well, hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Michigan Out of Doors. As always, if you missed part of this week's show or last week's show, you want to see something, again, you can always go to our website, michiganoutofdoorstv.com. We have full episodes of the show there every week. We're also on most of the social media platforms, and we're on YouTube if you want to subscribe to our channel there. Get an email every time we post something new. We also have a new podcast that we're launching, and that's on our website. You can find out more about that. Now, coming over the next couple of weeks, we're going to have hopefully some more good bow hunting action. Maybe somebody will get something on the ground in this next week. Jenny was out for the pheasant opener, we'll have that. And we're gonna show you, actually got to sit down with a survival expert. So if you're gonna be hunting in the big woods of the Upper Peninsula for the upcoming deer season, and you get lost or turn around in the woods and might have to spend a night or two out there, well, we're gonna show you how to do that safely and try to keep yourself warm and dry at the same time. So lots of good information there. As we get ready for the gun opener, which is just a week or so away, Next week's show being the last Thursday before the opener, we'll have our annual Palace in the Popples poem. So, so much happening in our great state. Get out and enjoy it. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week.
on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. WorkingPerson.com, from the factory floor to the job site and into the field. WorkingPerson.com supplies work boots and shoes, workwear, safety gear, and more. For individuals or outfitting your whole team, learn more at WorkingPerson.com. By G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime bows, manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan. G5 offers a line of archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at g5outdoors.com. By Jay Sporting Goods, with locations in Clare and Gaylord. Jay's has been serving the Michigan outdoor enthusiasts since 1971 with a wide variety of outdoor products. The gear, the knowledge, the tradition of Jay's, on the web at jaysportinggoods.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to fire away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden the white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love this land I am a Michigan man From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe Kalamazoo, east to Monroe To St. Marie and back again I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love 